Hey guys, this is Grixon. This is a key from a few weeks back. Yeah, this was a uh, time 20, my first time 20 HOA. I was still Necrolord here. It was an interesting key. So, if you're Necrolord doing the flesh craft before the key starts, you get it back. So you pretty much get a free shield. So that's the reason why you would do it. See, this is a fortified week, so I'm not going to be going left. I've had very bad luck going left on a fortified week. For some reason, that's just how it's been with me. I felt really confident in this HOA, so I'm, I have Super Strain and Bone Storm going. Uh, which is, uh, you know, pretty pretty aggressive, especially with the vial of putrefaction, putrefaction and not the Taz of S trinket. I dip kind of low on those uh, dark thrusts like that are happening. Grievous is kind of an issue in this dungeon. Uh, not so much for blood EK. I do I do pretty much I do pretty fine without it. Like well, like it doesn't really matter to me what happens. But it is hard on the healer with everybody else. So we just have to be, we have to continue to keep pulling big. Now, that guy took the gargoyle. I, I, I hate it when people take the gargoyle there. I love being vent there to control this, but for some reason, they love to do that. So, you know, if he takes the gargoyle, there should have been a good chance for me just to grab that pack too. I think I chained them in with the next thing. Um, the gargoyle gives you a lot of damage reduction and has a lot of single target damage. So you want as much damage reduction as possible during the elemental. So I, I always want to save him for the elemental if I can. It is, it's a pretty big deal in this dungeon to do that. Yeah, so I pull these guys in instead. This guy's telling me to taunt right here. He doesn't realize that he's just standing in a rapid fire. He didn't have aggro. He just... DPS do this a lot. Like, they find any way they can to, like, blame a tank when it really was just him and his positioning was horrible. Like, he just stood in rapid fire and thought he had aggro because he was getting hurt. You know, that's not to rag on all DPS. Like, you know, I do play DPS. I do enjoy it too, but... It seems like people who are like ranged main DPS don't really, you know, they don't have to really learn a lot of these mechanics because they're always so far away from it, right? They're not forced to learn them. So I can see why it's so easy just to be like, dude, I have aggro, but nope, not the case on that one. Because I grabbed those other two guys, I'm just going to roll this all in together. Also, just being mindful of, um, you know, my healer's mana on the bottom right of my screen here. So I'm always kind of checking that out. Maybe I need to put it somewhere else where I can see it better. Don't forget, if you're a blood DK... It's, it's hard to remember in the heat of a battle, but if you can blood boil before you death strike, like if you can fit it in rotationally, you'll get a lot more out of your death strike usage, if possible. goes up to four stacks so if you blood boil those four things around you have max stacks to 
make your death strike do more. I talk about this all the time. For some reason, I love to stutter step when I'm fighting something. I can't just sit still. I could not tell you why I do that. As you can see on my bottom right, damage types, this is a very good weak ore to have if you can get it. It will show you what type of damage you've taken in the last 5 seconds, or is it 10 seconds? I, I'm not exactly sure of the amount of time, but it's very good for blood decay, really any tank, um, to see what you can mitigate effectively, right? So I know I'm taking a lot of fire damage, so AMZ can help everybody, AMS can help everybody, well, me. It's very good to know what you can mitigate. Fleshcraft doing what it does, giving me stats. I can see Archie is drinking. I see his mana coming up. Actually, maybe he just drank and he's on his way. So this is more of a DK pole, um, or maybe Demon Hunter, I'm not sure who else does this very effectively to pull those two packs together. Very important to stop as many obliterates as you can. It's crazy we have a, um, a rogue and a hunter and I'm still like losing threat. I wonder if they're not really tricks of the trading me that much or misdirecting me, I'm not sure. Maybe I should add a weak aura that shows like just a little, you know, somewhere near the top that shows, hey, you got this for this long. So, you know, just being mindful of Archie's mana and trying to pull as efficiently as I can. The more stuff you can fight and pull at once and keep there, the more damage your team is going to do. So you gotta find this balance as a tank between you doing a lot of damage and tanking up front. This is why I can't really play Demon Hunter because they have to kite so often. A lot of players abilities passively just cleave. So the longer you can stand in a spot and take tank everything together. The more damage your team will do, the more efficient your pulls will be, and the quicker you'll get through a dungeon, especially a fortified dungeon with, a, with big pulls like this one. It's very crucial to set up your pulls in a way that's efficient. Efficient as you can. As you can make it, anyways. So, if you you know, I this is from a Blood DK's point of view obviously so if you are finding you have to run out a lot on a fortified week maybe sacrifice a little bit of your damage because damage is good but it's not going to mean anything if you can't stay alive or if you have to kite all the time because you're making your whole team lose out on damage so that damage you could be doing okay yeah you may be picking up an extra 2k or whatever you're doing but I don't think it's going to outweigh what your whole team could be doing if you kept everything grouped up together and you tanked it. I don't know. I've been playing this game a long time, so maybe it's more of a mentality of how things used to be. I'm not sure. You know, of course I still like to do damage, and the more damage you can ultimately do, the faster you can time a key, um, leave more you know, margin for error, but I still believe it's defensive first, and if you are confident that you will be fine in a dungeon, then you can scale up some damage, and then just keep finding, you know, it's a, it's a, 
it's a balancing act, figuring out where that sweet spot is for you. Oh, that thing, the spiteful hit him. Yeah, the spiteful killed him. It's unfortunate. I could have gripped it, but I was busy. People are hitting Coldheart and not this dog. So, I'm going to spoil it for you right now. I don't move out of one of Coldheart's things. And I get blasted into another pack. <laughs> Which causes my route to go weird. The count stays the same, it's just the order is different. So, that first boss... He spawns three adds, and they do like a little RP. He kills them, and then you can fight him. Well, it forced my order differently. Oh, there I go. This actually worked out fine. We actually did okay here. I'm trying to bring all these to the cold heart for more cleave. Um, this actually ends up perfect. We actually do just fine here. So they do the RP for the first boss. He kills them, and then you can engage. Because I got this pack first, I had to combine stuff in a different way to try and make it still make sense. So anyways, when we get to the boss, he still has those guys up. And I think it's over. That's so why I pull him. Well, it wasn't over. So we ended up getting those three extra guys with the boss during a fortified week. And it was pretty extra unneeded count. Like, we don't wipe. I, you know, buckle down and do my best to make sure we get through it. But it was unnecessary, to say the least. And it costs, it had to have cost at least an extra minute, minute and a half out of the key. Of course, fessing up to my mistakes. So normally that middle pack, I roll in with two guys by the stairs. You're going to see me try and do this awkward thing to get some aggro here and then run and bring them. Okay, I stay for some aggro and then I run. I accidentally clipped that stoneborn. I did not mean to do that because this is not how I normally do things. The loyal beast goes off because I wasn't there to stun it. I'm I'm running, right? Like I'm running. Yeah, so normally those two guys I roll in with that middle pack that I end up getting bounced into. Six, six dot, uh, six stacks of that bleed is pretty big. Oh, I guess never mind. The uh, hemostasis goes up to five count, not four. My mistake earlier. Uh, for your your death strike to do more. See if you can hit five targets with blood boil. You will have it for fifteen seconds. So it doesn't have to be right away for death strike. It's just. If you can, if you can watch this, keep an eye on it, like just the best you can, to try and make sure you're getting the most out of your death strikes. And you don't have to watch it hard. Just make you know if you can make sure you have that buff up. See, I was taking some serious damage, so I wasn't able to make sure I always had a blood boil going. It's the plan, but it doesn't always work that way when stuff's starting to, you know, get a little squirrely. So, while this is going on, you always want to make sure you're staying above five um, bone shield stacks for ossuary, if you can. Like, you know, it's not always going to be perfect. You just want to make sure you're not over capping and you're not getting under five too often. 
keeping up hemostasis with blood boils not over capping runic power there's a lot to consider as a blood death knight while you're running I'm sure it just looks like all we do is just press death strike but there's so blood death knights are very very complex there's a lot of cooldowns that you have to manage too and it's good to be using them as much as you can so look I grab all these the RP is still going and I think it's done right I think it's done it's not done so what do we get we get three collectors and instead of just killing this right here see I think it's over I think it just reset right it just reset no they stay there and now we're dealing with them with full health again and they're all draining down what a mess don't do what I did here do not do this this was horrible. I can't believe I made this mistake. So many casts are going off. I'm starting to panic a little bit. I just mass script them all over to try and interrupt what I can and get them away from the shards. The, um, the crumbling slant, like the stuff on the ground. Unfortunately, we lose the hunter. Mage is having a field day because he has both of the gargoyles as well. In a way, this is good because it gives the rogue funnel damage. If you don't know how a um, subtlety rogue works, the more mobs are around, they can funnel damage from all of those into one mob. So he can take all of these ads, all of these things, and prioritize all of that damage into the boss so that amped up his damage a lot but obviously it's not what you want to do I'm way over count now I'm over count like almost five percent we did have that hunter go down uh, it was just a, a crap show and it was 100% my fault I first started tanking like seriously this expansion see you can't do that either you can't run through like that on a DPS like you have to be very predictable as a tank you can't just make a move like that and expect him to like no that was totally 100% me fractured sunlight's coming this guy needs to move. Um, so touching back on my point, I had a lot of uh, tank anxiety uh, when I first started. Oh, oh, don't look at that word. Don't look at that swear word. Oh, you can't see my hand. I'm, I'm covering it. <laughs> don't look at that. <laughs> don't look at that. So when he's saying enough for skip, I'm thinking he is, I'm thinking about what he means by skip. So I'm looking at my percentage here and I'm thinking, am I able to skip a full pack? Like skip all the way up to the boss? Like, you know, pull one of the, the packs after this boss and then skip the other. Alright, so if you're a blood DK, this dungeon is very good for Necrolord if you can, because you can pull all these with a bomb Lin like this and then you can gore into the next one it's very very handy so I'm still trying to look at my count I'm trying to figure out where I would be after one pack in. We've 
only done one phase and he's already at under half health. That's a fortified week for you. Fleshcraft can be a pretty good defense ability. You get pretty good damage reduction while you're channeling it. If you're Venthyr here, you can teleport before he slams down and avoid the dot. fight. It's such a good blood DK fight because of all the adds. Like a warrior has a, hor has a horrible time, right? Because they can't really like do anything about that aside from interrupting one. And they have to get into melee range to interrupt. Not a fight I would like. Ruth is by far the scariest lieutenant for Blood DK because of his 50% heal reduction. If you're playing Kyrian, um, it might be beneficial to cleanse that bleed with the vial. A lot of people expect you to kite there, but it's Blood DK. I rarely see a benefit for it unless it's like inspiring. Big doggies. I think they were actually. I think they were. They may have not been. Yeah, so I was thinking if I hit 93% right here, I'd be able to invis skip through straight to the boss. That's what I was talking about. Like we'd be skipping Sogonon either way. But if we we're at 93 right here, we would be able to invis skip right up to the boss. Problem. I mean, that's only because we were over count by as much as we were. The problem with that is you don't really want to do that because then you waste you wasted two gargoyles there that you want for the boss. You don't really want to do one on the LT and one on the boss. You want them both for the boss, ideally. They do so much single target damage. Archie there got hit by uh, a dark thrust, I believe. It'd be kind of nice to have a weak aura that kind of like shows a cone in front of that mob so you'd know where that dark thrust is going to go. Because I always sidestep it and then they turn where I sidestepped and then do it again. Sometimes I, I wreck a, uh, a DPS or a healer that way. See, he meant skip isn't like so good on skip. I thought he meant like skip a whole pack. That was a mistake on my part. So, the mage failed to get both of the stone burns at the same time. If you don't know how that works, or if you've never played Venthyr, you get a little 
wherever you have your little button, mine shows up like right here, you you press it, just click it as fast as you can. If you don't have it macroed anywhere or like put on your bar, just click it as fast as you can. And as long as both of these gargoyles are next to each other and you press it, you'll actually get both of them. You'll click it, it'll grab the first one. If you keep clicking it, it'll also get the second one. So you don't need a fancy macro, you don't need it on your bars. You can just do the standard click on the UI. It'll work just fine. You just have to keep pressing it fast. Like just, you know what I mean? You'll get both of them. He, he did it other times. I don't know what happened here, but if you only get one, then as the tank, your job is just to kind of try your best to keep the other one alive and tank its damage until he can grab the second one. It'll be up near the end of the fight though, unfortunately. On fortified weeks. Hundred percent shadow damage from that thing. So I know I'm about to get into the next big room. And I'm running super strained, so I have three of my diseases. So I, I'm saving a bomb limb. I'm saving dancing rune weapon so that way I can apply blood bo blood boils as much as like you know as much as possible so dancing rune weapon double blood boil get what I can out then we use a bomb limb for damage blood boil when it's up on the other side just spread my dot as much as possible and it's just going to be pulsing runic power for me. I mean, if you see the damage there, I'm keeping up with the DPS. I have a really bad habit of gore fiending, like mass gripping to me. I click on my own frame and I mass grip. I do it very often. It's not the ideal case you want to mass grip onto another mob, but it's definitely worth doing in a pinch if you for positioning reasons. But I just I do it too often. I gotta get those bone shields up. There you go. Still got some mobs, yep, bone storm. Bonestorm's really nice. It has a lot of good offense and defense, but it's very risky to take if you're not Venthyr. Venthyr Swarming Mist gives you so much runic power, it's very easy to overcap on runic power if you don't have Bonestorm. So most covenants, I would not recommend taking Bonestorm, especially like if it's a higher key where you're just constantly needing to Death Strike. You just won't have the runic power to spare. Uh, the only exception really is Venthyr, purely because of Red Mist, Red Mist, Swarming Mist. Red Mist! I haven't seen those movies in a long time. It's Red Mist! Three minutes, easy. Definitely hit that. Even with my mistakes in that early dungeon, we do just fine. Sigma of Pride, I failed to AMS it in time. So this dot, be careful with this dot, this uh, Sigma, uh, Stigma of Pride. It is a backloaded dot. So you will take a crap ton of damage in the last three to four seconds of the dot than the rest of it combined. So if it's a tyrannical week and it's a progression key for you and you get that, put up mitigation near the end of the dot and I'm pretty sure it's physical damage. So a warrior, you know, if it's a big key and you have that, you might want to think about shield walling the last four or five seconds of it. Pride. 
Okay, I take that one too because my AMS was late the first time. Let's see. Yeah, it's shadow. Oh. It's. Is it shadow damage? It is shadow damage. Never mind. I thought it was a bleed like a physical. It's not. See, that's why that weak aura really helps. But yeah, we still have a minute 30 and he's dropping fast. Like a sack of potatoes. Alright, I was able to AMS that one, which is helpful. Ooh. I think that hunter was three of our five deaths. It's always nice having a battle res. And yeah, timed. Got myself a, uh, a portal. Got six points. Good time. Big Dot's probably going to kill me. See how backloaded that is? He started healing me near the end there. Alright guys, thanks for coming. Um, I'm trying to get better at my thumbnail, so let me know what you guys think. And if you have any comments on the video, let me know. Yeah, I'll see you next one. I'm trying to only upload content that actually matters. Like, that, you know what I mean? That's progression for me, or like hierarchies that I haven't already done before. So, you're seeing a bit less of it. Alright, thanks guys. See you in the next one.